Someone has said, we ask for health, not to serve others, but to engage in riotous living. (laughs) We ask for wealth so that we may live in luxury instead of serving God with our money. The word spend in the verse means to waste or squander. God will not give us something just to waste it. God refuses to listen to men who eagerly pursue selfish pleasures. Greed is idolatry and God hates it. This doesn't mean we cannot ask God to do something for those we love. This does not mean that we cannot ask God to give us our daily bread and meet our needs. The key to understanding this verse is the word spend. It is a word that means praying for something just because you want it. It has nothing to do with the will of God or the purpose of God. It's just a selfish prayer. It's a frivolous prayer. We must remember that God's ultimate concern is not with our team winning the ball game but in himself being glorified in the process. His ultimate concern is not that we all have perfect health, but that we lift every ounce of our health up to his honor and glory. His ultimate concern is not that we have a high-paying job, but that we praise him and are thankful for what he provides. His ultimate concern is that we are consumed with his glory in whatever state we are in, and I believe that God delights in giving even the smallest of things to his children but we must weigh the motives of our hearts against the substance of our requests. We must ask, is my desire in this to see God glorified in my life, or am I just wanting this so that it's for me? God plainly says that some people do not get what they ask for because they ask for the wrong reason. You probably have read this. It's on many cards that I've seen in the greeting card stores, but it bears listening to right now it goes like this I ask for strength that I might achieve he made me weak that I might obey I ask for health that I might do greater things I was given grace that I might do better things I ask for riches that I might be happy I was given poverty that I might be wise I ask for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I ask for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I receive nothing that I ask for, but all that I hoped for, my prayer was answered. Sometimes we don't pray right. Listen to me now. Sometimes we pray thy will be changed (laughs) not thy will be done (laughs) did you ever pray that prayer maybe not in those words but lord can we talk about this once more thy will be changed someone said when you pray do you give instructions or do you report for duty sometimes number five our prayers are not answered because of unresolved conflicts The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Again, in Matthew chapter 5, it says, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. Be reconciled to your brother and come and offer your gift. God has made it clear in his word that our acceptance with him is based solely on the work he did for us at Calvary and our belief in his son is our only hope for salvation. But God has also told us in his word that our fellowship with him and our prayer relationship with him is conditioned upon our relationships with other people as well as with himself. If I have offended my brother, says this verse, I must go to him and make that right or my prayers will be hindered. If my brother has offended me, I must go to him and make it right or my prayers will be hindered. The responsibility is mine in either case to make things right with my brother and then come to the Lord with my prayers. Nothing can so quickly cancel the friction of life as prayer. If you find yourself growing angry at someone, pray for him. Anger doesn't live very well in an atmosphere of prayer, according to William McElroy. The Bible says if you are harboring resentment or unforgiveness or anger in your heart toward another brother or sister, it may not shut down your prayer life. It just says it will hinder it. It'll get in the way. 
It's almost like you're coming to the Lord with your prayer and you hear him in the back of your mind saying to you, have you taken care of that yet? And it takes the edge off of it. Nothing is so important as maintaining the right relationships that you have with others. And then number six tells us that our prayers are not answered because of uncompassionate hearts. Proverbs 21, 13 says, whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Wow. This is not about trying to feed the world's hungry, although we ought to be concerned about that. This prayer barrier is about failing to have compassion for those we know who are in need. And the Bible says when you harbor an uncompassionate spirit, when you don't ask God to make you sensitive to people you can help, then it will be hard for you to have the relationship in prayer that you desire. And then finally, the last one, and I have to tell you, this is for men only. All you women can't listen to this. I'm fooling with you a little bit because y'all need to listen to it, but I'll never forget when I first understood this. And I read the verse and I read it and I thought, is that really true? And I read it again, and every time I've read it, I've come back with this. And so I'm going to read this verse to you, and you see if you have the same response I do. 1 Peter 3, 7. Husbands, likewise dwell with them, your wives, with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Wow. Men, what that says to us, if we're Christian husbands and we have a Christian wife, our relationship with our wife can often be the reason why God isn't listening carefully to our prayers. This passage of Scripture says that men that are not having the right kind of relationship with their wives can at the very least find their prayers hindered. It makes it hard to pray for your wife when you haven't been loving her and meeting her needs and living with her according to the teaching of the Word of God, according to knowledge. On the other hand, just think of the potential that is wrapped up in the two of you praying together for something because the Bible says that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by the Father. When you pray with your wife, men, you open up an incredible potential before God. I know that for most of us who are A personalities, I confess, praying with your wife may be a difficult thing, but praying with your wife is an important thing. The Bible says if you don't cherish and honor the woman in your life who is your wife, If you don't try to serve her, if your relationship with her is not right, it will affect the way you pray and what happens when you pray. So there you have it. Unprayed prayers, unconfessed sin, unbelieving minds, unrighteous motives, unresolved conflicts, uncompassionate hearts, and unresponsive husbands. As I look down at the list, nobody... Nobody has all those things going on. Maybe you look at it and you say, you know what, I need to check on that one. This one, you know, I got something here. That's what we should be doing. Nobody's guilty of all these things. This is just a checklist. But here's the good news about this, men and women. There's not one thing on this whole list that you can't take care of right now. The Bible says the Lord is good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon him. Psalm 86, 5. Someone has taken this thought and changed the words of amazing grace so that they sound like this. Amazing prayer, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now am found, was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and cares I have already come. T'was prayer that brought me safe thus far, and prayer will lead me home. I want to give you one final little paradigm that wraps all of this up in four statements. This is what this is all about. I've written this down in the front of my Bible, and here's what it says. 
when you pray if the request is wrong God says no how many of you know no is an answer we try to teach our kids that but we don't like it when it comes back to us yes is the answer we want but no is an answer and I am so thankful for the times over my life as I look back over my shoulder when I have prayed for something and God has said no I didn't like it at the time but oh do I see it now so if the request is wrong God will just say no and you'll get it if the timing is wrong God will say slow how many of you know God isn't on our schedule God doesn't work off of our calendar app God doesn't work off of our time schedule God works totally off of his time schedule and when we ask for something he's not obligated to give it to us by next Thursday so sometimes we ask God for something and it's a good request and it's a legitimate request but the timing for the reception of it is just not right sometimes we ask God for something and if the request is wrong he says no and if the timings wrong he says slow and sometimes and this has been the bulk of the message today we ask God for something and we are wrong something's going on in our life that needs to be fixed and when that happens God says grow grow up get it right and the good news is that if the request is right and the timing is right and you are right God says go I want you to know that God answers prayer he's answered a lot of prayers for me continues to answer them for me every day but I'm like you I know I can do better with this prayer thing and I'm sure when we get done with our lives and we look over our shoulders and somebody says if you could do something better what would you do somebody asked Billy Graham that question and he said if I could do anything better I would pray more I would have prayed more in my life all of us feel that you know someone said if you want to empty an auditorium announce that you're going to preach on prayer because nobody will come because everybody has a bit of a sense of guilt in our hearts that we don't pray as we ought can I get a witness kind of somber but it's a good witness so you know what this is not to make us feel guilty about prayer this is to help us find out how we can be more effective in praying I got some things in my life right now that I really need God for how about you I want to make sure that I don't have anything in the way of God being able to hear my prayer and answer it I hope you feel the same way a lady came up to me she said I've been praying for my father and he's getting close to the end of his life and God doesn't seem to be hearing and I told her Howard Hendricks, who was a good friend of mine, once told me that he prayed for his father for every single day for 72 years. And at the very end of his life, before he died, he became a Christian. All I can say to you is if you're praying and it seems like God isn't answering, remember God's not on your time schedule, and so you're to pray continually, faithfully, every day, no matter what. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep praying. And remember that God loves you and his desire for you is that you begin to learn how to settle down in the realization of his will. Dwight O. Moody was traveling by boat on one of the Great Lakes when a really bad storm developed. The other passengers on the boat cowered in fear. They even started an impromptu prayer meeting asking God to deliver them from the storm. Moody didn't join in this prayer meeting. When asked why not, he answered with these words, I have a sister in Chicago and one in heaven, and I don't care which one I see tonight. <laughs> I'm not there yet, folks. Uh, that, uh, that's, a, that's a level of faith I haven't achieved yet. But that's a great illustration of what it means to rest in the providence of God. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants you to get your prayers answered. And let's make sure we understand that the one reason most of us don't get them answered is just because we don't ask them. We have not because we ask not. If you are like me, you've had this experience. You pray for something and God doesn't seem to answer your request. And then much later, you understand why. 
It is only then you realize that God knew better than you did. God is a wise father who knows what is best for his children. The key to being able to trust God is knowing that you are his child. So if you have questions about your relationship with God, I hope you'll allow me to send you two free resources that can help. One is our booklet called Your Greatest Turning Point, and the other is our monthly devotional magazine, Turning Points. In them, you'll find biblical answers to living as a child of God. We will gladly send them both to you free of charge if you will contact us here at Turning Point today.